You are now listening to the Too Short for the League podcast, hosted by Caleb Kingston. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to our sponsors, Idea Athletic, for bringing the show to you guys. Couldn't be done without them. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe, do what you need to do. We have a big guest today. He doesn't really need an introduction. He's been around the league for many years, probably longer than some of you have been alive. <laughs> it's Gavin Field. Welcome to the show, mate. <laughs> hey, mate. Thanks for uh, having me. And yes, that is true. A lot of my teammates, I've been in the league longer than I've been alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. What, what have you been up to this off season? Uh, just spending time with the family. Uh, you know, got two kids at home, four, uh, just turned four and a one and a half year old. So they keep me fairly busy. Uh, you know, the daughter just, my oldest just started kindy. So preparing for that. And that's basically off season for me nowadays. Are you going to be doing the school drop offs and stuff? Uh, she's actually going to my school. I'm a, oh, I'm, you're a, teacher, I'm, I'm a primary, yeah. Yeah, primary school teacher. So it's not in the air, but we've decided to bring her to my school. So kind of doing school drop offs, but my wife takes her to class, but she comes into my rooms in the morning, which is. You know, kind of cool to have my daughter just around the corner. We got some, you got some sad, well, sad and happy news. It's happy, I guess, for you because you get to move on to the next chapter of your life. But sad to some of the Coburn fans, and especially, I mean, I guess it's uh, happy news for some coaches because they don't have to scout you anymore. <laughs> but this will be your last season uh, playing NBL One basketball. Yep. What was the thought process going into that? Uh, it was there was multiple reasons, but yes, the most important one was my family because that was my. You know, they've sacrificed a lot, especially my wife, now that we've had kids and a lot of Tuesday, Thursday nights, Sunday mornings when, or whatever, game nights, looking after the kids when I'm off doing playing basketball. Um, so, yeah, I've always had a, a plan of around now, be done. Um, I want to be done when my body is still able to do what I want it to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to, you know, fall off too much at the end. And, yeah, you know, body's starting to get a bit sore, doesn't recover as, you, as it used to after sessions yeah. and all that stuff. Um, I just made, just made the decision uh, at the end of last year that I was, yeah, that was, uh, this was going to be my last year and I wanted to go into a season knowing it was my last year, not making a se- decision partway through, mm-hmm. just so I can enjoy what's left, basically. Yeah, I, I read an article that Coburn released saying you don't want it to be a farewell tour. You want to be able to take in, like, everything about the season, about you playing basketball. Yeah, when, when, I, when I told some of the guys that I was that was done, uh, that, oh, that, that this year will be my last year, Hayden Bell was just like, yeah, you just want a Kobe farewell tour. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 I, I want to make the decision. So he's, um, yeah, so yeah, just yeah, just to be done and, you know, have the plan going forward and also help the club um, prepare because obviously I've been a major part of this team for many, many years. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I will leave whole, not just on the court, but in terms of, leadership and stuff like that so just to help the club prepare so they knew what was going forward yeah i mean you've been there for a long time i'll make you feel old larry this yeah. this might offend you i was uh five <laughs> when you when you start playing COVID. doesn't offend me <laughs> there's well i'm actually not the oldest guy on the team anymore because kyle arm has come over yeah. but for years i was the, we're the same age but he's got me by seven months or something like that yeah um but yeah i think i was i'm the only me and kyle are only 30 year olds in the team and last year was even, even more it was me at 33 and then it was a couple of mid 20s and then everyone else was 22 and below yeah a little bit of different uh life you know <laughs> circumstance when did you start playing basketball uh, my first like proper basketball memory was when i was about three um i was doing mini ball at coburn um it's just a memory that again i don't know if it's a memory or i've seen the video so many times that it's ingrained into my brain yeah but it's a guy called rod baker um he used to do the mini ball and like a life member at coburn and it's him picking me up and to dunk it on, a, on the eight foot ring when I was three years old. Oh. So that's my first memory of me on a court. But yeah, so I've been playing since about three. At Coburn? At Coburn, yeah. That's, wow, you got to be a life member now. Yeah, so I'm like, so yeah, my family is very deep in Coburn. My pop actually started the junior program back in 70s-ish. Oh. So my pop's a life member. My dad is a life member. He's the, he was a play, championship player in 84, assistant coach in 92, coached Wobble all the way through. So he's also a life member. My mum's now a life member for all the volunteering work and I'm a playing life member because they're, they're slightly different. But yeah, so my family is, and my sister also has been playing since we were the same age. So like, you know, since she was three and all the way up until she still plays down on Monday nights at Coburn as, mm. as, as, as a junior. I'm um, to you. <laughs> when did you realise you, you were good at basketball? Uh, I don't know. That's it. So I was... 
as a like a young kid, I was you know under I was eight years old playing an under twelve development team. Mm-hmm. I would have been a um, yeah you know, just the eleventh, twelfth guy. So being obviously four years under the limit, and me and a guy named Trav Mitchell were both the two guys that were um, part of the the, te- the squad back in those days. But probably then I knew, but it wasn't until really under like then through twelves, fourteens, and I was like the third. Fourth, third, fourth, third, fourth guy on the team, like option, and then probably about under 18s is really when it hit that I can, yeah, I was, I had somewhere to go. Obviously, I knew I was good, but it was when I went into under 18s that was when it really struck me that I had some, I could do what I, you know, I could do this. Are your parents tall? Uh, my dad is so my dad's about six four and a half. My mum is about five foot four. I can actually hug my mum without putting my arms on her head. I can put my arms above her head. Yeah. So no, my mum's not talking about my dad's side of the family. Is my, my pop was 6'4", and my nan is about six foot as well. Were you tall growing up? Like, were you bigger than the other kids? Or were you a late bloomer? So that that's where it was. When I was under 10s to under 12s, I was tall. Mm-hmm. And then everyone else was shot above me. And then from I didn't grow till going into my year 11. So over that school, that summer holidays, I grew about four inches. Um, wow. I knew my record actually grew an inch in four days. I know, I know that because my birthday is 27th of December and for some reason I measured myself then and I measured myself on New Year's Day and I had grown an inch. Wow. So <laughs> That's insane, Greg. Yeah, my, my sister had gone away for a trip um, to Canberra for some, I can't remember what it was for exactly, but in that time that she went away, it was only like two and a half weeks, I went from my dad's shoulder height to almost eye level with my dad mm-hmm. and she came out of the, you know, uh, we're waiting at the terminal for her and she couldn't Matt, believe that I had grown yeah. so much in that short amount of time. That's intense. Yeah. <laughs> When you were playing, um, when you were playing wobble, was there only one division per? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, yeah. Um, sixteen, like you know, sixteen one, sixteen two. So top age, bottom age. Yeah, there was only one. And then even back when I was under twelve, it was um, four carnivals a year. That's all you got. So you trained for, for four carnivals. There was state champs, redback classic, Willen carnival, and cougar classic that you played. So there wasn't even wobble. There wasn't wobble. There were, wobble was only under thirteens and above. Oh, okay. Yeah. How do you feel now when you see wobble teams though? And there's six divisions in one. Um, for the for the children, mm-hmm. for the people, that, the kids that want to play basketball, I think it's great. I think that giving kids opportunity is to play, to play obviously the sport, and as much as it's grown over the last you know, five years or whatever you want to call it, I think that's great. My only issue with it is, do those kids have the right coaches and are there the right systems in every single club um, to? actually teach these children how to play basketball properly to give them the best shot and at growth and all that you never know that you could yeah you could get someone that doesn't know what they're doing and just steal the kid in the wrong direction we lose a kid that that's a late bloomer to basketball and he goes and plays some other sport or she goes and plays out some other sport and we lose that kid to that sport because there wasn't the right coach so that's my only gripe with it other than that giving people opportunities to play well that's what we that's what you're about that's what you want to be able to do i think at this point it doesn't look like they're going to cut divisions. So at this point, I think they got to invest in coaches for coaches. Yeah. And that way we can sort of cut out yeah, that I, area. Yeah. See, I only know my experience at Coburn. I know Coburn do a pretty good job of trying to upskill the coaches in their what whatever they want to do. I don't know about all other clubs because, again, I've only got one um, perspective. Um, my only problem with it is if, I mean, if I had my two children, when they get older and they're both playing wobble and one's playing in Bunbury, one's playing up in East <laughs> Perth, you know, we've got to choose which one we go yeah, to yeah. kind of thing. That's the only thing that's disappointing that there's not there. And that's nothing for me. It was also great to be able to see, you know, I was under 14s, I could stay and watch under 16s or fill in and then I could stay and watch the 18s, which mm-hmm. is where my dad was coaching, so I was there all day. Whereas now it's a bit of a, you know, I guess segregated. I don't know if that's yeah, the right yeah. word, but I did, that's just way again what I grew up having and that's why it's a bit different for me. Did you win any championships in your junior years? No, unfortunately I didn't. They're so hard to get. Um, it's insane. Again, I was talking with Kyle Armour the other day and going up through, we because we played against each other from when we were 10 years old, and for the first three years of Wobble, we always versed each other in the grand final. And we would actually, strange enough, we would alternate wins every single game. <laughs> and going into under-14s, we they beat us. and then But we had then we had the national championships, the under-14 national championships, which was actually in Williton, and we versed each other in the, fi- in the 11, 12... So then we won that one, but which meant we, when we beat them, when we matched up with them again in the, in the um, wobble, we lost again. Oh. And then I was in a um, D League Grand Final one, once, yeah. So we lost that too. Oh, okay. Our point guard decided to 
go on a holiday rather than play the grand final. It was really? Great. Oh, it was, wow. yeah, it was great. <laughs> and then I had to go play point guard against, I don't know, you may know, Ryan Sefoulis playing play me full court. That wasn't fun because he, was he was a very good defender. It's so hard to get those younger championships yeah. in the junior years, I'm telling you. You went to University of West Georgia, is that correct? Yes, yep. I did some good research. <laughs> How? When, what age were you when you realised um, I would do college instead? Um, I don't know what age, but it was a it was a goal of mine. I, I would say probably from about fifteen. I love you know I was a major like JJ Redick fan in well, watching those Duke teams and that's rare. People hated him. <laughs> I love JJ Redick. Um, still do. I, he's one of my like I like listen to his podcast as soon as it comes out. I'm listening to it like within yep. minutes. Um, but that was yeah the the aura of college back again. I don't know if it's for me back then was a lot more. It was it was a massive aura. You know, yep. people again yeah, D one NBA players did three four years. So the aura there. So I will always. That was always my goal, and that was the plan from I say 15, 16. How did how did you go about getting recruit? Did you recruit, or did you just send your tapes out? Like how did that? How was that process? Uh, again, back when I went, you know, back in the old days. <laughs> um, it wasn't it, that long ago. <laughs> well, two thousand and eight is when I went over. So okay, it, was, yeah. it was it was quite a while ago. Um, it was it was a lot different to when it is now. The Exposure isn't as much, and uh, mm-hmm. it was, wasn't as much. I, I just lucked into it. I was actually um, a reserve for the under twenty state team, and I just decided I was train on because I got told if anyone from the position, the gut point guard to the power forward, was got injured, I'm in. So I was like, well, there's eight opportunities if someone yeah. goes down. So obviously, you don't want anyone going down. But eight, so I kept on training, and a guy from Washington State um, was over to look at a couple of the guys, and he liked me randomly, and you know, the guy that wasn't in the team, and. He came back out to Australia, visited me. I was actually looking at going to Washington State, which I would have actually been there with Bain, Clay. Baines and Clay. Yeah, yeah. that would yeah, so Clay would have been a sophomore my freshman year, I think it was. Um, but with scholarship and stuff, didn't work out. And then, but then that coach put me on to put my name out there to college, the college coaches, and there was a few possibilities. And West Georgia contacted me and saying, "What do you need to come?" And I said, "Offer me a scholarship, full ride," and that was it. And he goes, "Yep, done." So that was how I'd made the decision. And added, there was also an already, there was an Australian also already there. So that was, I didn't know him. He was mm-hmm. from Sydney, but it was, that would have been, that was a So you good didn't help. go on a visit or anything no, like that? I just cut off the scholarship, went, went, it's Georgia, it's America. It's again, there's an Australian there. And I went, okay, let's go. Again, very bit different to what it would be like now. Yeah. Div one though, right? No, D2, D2. D2, D2. 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 The school is actually starting to be D1 next year. So oh, okay. it was always in the talks, but we'll slowly, like, we end up getting a like, 7,000 seat stadium when I was there, blah, blah, blah. And now they're actually they're finally getting into D1. So back then, D2 and D3 wouldn't have been as highly touted as it is today. No, uh, I, I think, I don't, I don't see that. Again, if you're a high level D2 as opposed to a low level D1, I think it's almost better because mm-hmm. you're going to play, you're going to have an opportunity to play. And like, I played every single game of my career there. Um, like literally I didn't miss a game. Yeah, uh, di- I didn't get a DMP or anything. So I had the opportunity from first off. I, if I went to a D1, I don't know if I would have had that. And I don't know if I would have in, you know, enjoyed it as much as I did. What did you study in college? <laughs> That's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> Started off as chemistry. Oh, I, I, I was chemistry. And then stuff happened. One year there was a te- that you know, the, a teacher messed me up. Mess- messed me up what I was doing. And even with the dean of chemistry telling him to change his rules he didn't and so after that mum I talked to mum dad and I'm like I'm not like I don't like this right now and they go just go enjoy your years so I end up being sports management so my first my first sports my first class in sports management was watching LeBron's decision to go to Miami (laughs) so it kind of you know hit home that was that was an all right thing to do crazy what uh what made you choose college over staying at home besides you know, you just love the college lifestyle. Was that is that basically it, that you just love the college lifestyle? Or well, it wasn't. It wasn't so much. Again, I love the college lifestyle, but it wasn't so much the lifestyle. Then it was yeah, the aura. Um, but there also wasn't opportunities for, um, like the DPS and stuff like that. The, the DP started while I was over in college. There wasn't all those opportunities weren't really there. And honestly, for me, I I wouldn't even be. I, I don't think going if I went sh- tried to do MBL stuff straight from college. Uh, straight from high school I don't think I would have had any look in at all I I developed late like I said and under 18s I really hit my groove and then so I, I didn't make a state team my whole career my whole life yeah so I, I was never on the radar I hit reserve in, in top age 20s so that was the my, the highlight by like the top of my state trial so 
I don't think that was a reason it would give me and also gave me an opportunity to, I don't, I don't, I don't say reinvent myself, but go somewhere where no one knows me and I can just become my own person. Was it the first time you're on your own? Yeah, yeah. First time I moved, I was 18 and like five months or something like that. And I, the first time I'd been at home and I moved across the other side of the world by myself. So you think going to college really helped you develop more than what it would have if you had stayed? Yeah, I had to become an extrovert. I had to introduce myself to people. I had to you know, meet people because I knew nobody. Like, it's like life skills. Yeah, life skills. I, again, people always ask me like, what did college do for you? And yeah, cool. I played basketball and all that, but I met my wife. I've got two kids. Like, do you meet your wife in college? Yeah, my wife's from my wife's from over there. So, oh, wow. like, in the end of the day, who cares? Like, I like basketball. But who cares about basketball? That's the most important thing. I got my wife, and now I got my and now two kids. So, yeah. I, like, college was a success. Even if I didn't play a basketball game, I did. I, I succeeded in life. How'd you so, meet? How'd you meet her? Like, what was she? Uh, she's a volleyball player. So, volleyball player. So, we trained in the same gym. Um, met the team. All the teams got pretty close. Like. We'll cl- basketball team, we'll close with the cross country, soccer, um, softball, volleyball, like even the football team, you know. We hung out with basically all the sports and that was basically it and just hanging out as, as you do. Well, you what, was your, what was your pick-up line? <laughs> Probably just my accent. <laughs> the Australian accent. <laughs> and I'm tall, that's what she tells me. And an yep. accent, I'm tall. That was, that was basically <laughs> it. That's all I had going for me. Good appeal. <laughs> yeah. This episode is brought to you by ID Athletic. ID Athletic is a proudly Australian-owned and operated business that can help you with all your custom apparel needs. If you have ever thought the NBL One jerseys this season look great, I can promise you it was made by ID Athletic. Whether you're representing a club, school, or just making an individual purchase, the great team at ID Athletic can help you. Once again, thank you, ID Athletic, for sponsoring this episode. You come back from college, still wanting to play basketball. Do you go straight to Coburn Cougars and just be like, you try out, or they already know you? I know you from your juniors. Like how, how did you make the team from there? Oh, I'd, I'd already I'd already played. So I played in 20, 2007, so yep. my first year out of, uh, out of high school. So I played then. I was already playing. Uh, every time I'd come back, I would come back on a Tuesday. Like I'd get back from America on a Tuesday, and I would just rock up the training that night. They knew I was coming because mum and dad were always around. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's, so I'd go train. I played a couple ga- I played a few games here and there. One year they asked me to fill in because I had a few injuries. I know it sounds weird filling in for SBL or NBL1, but... I was having a year off before my senior year, and they like, oh, can you just come play a couple of games for us? <laughs> and I said, yep, no worries. Um, so, yeah, it was basically that. They knew I was come back, and straight away I just started playing, and then it was, what do I want to do from there? And that's when I uh, they had Wildcats trials for DPs, and I went I went and did that, and I ended up getting a DP spot as well. So I did, yeah. that, so I did that for a year as well uh, as I came back and was looking for opportunities in that sense. How was the play style here compared to what it was in college? Uh, um... <laughs> It's, 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 it was very, in D2, I would say D2 is very, fairly similar. Like you get, it just depends on the type of, we played, a, my team played a very slow pace, um, but that was just the choice of the coach. Um, but even I'm watching them now, they're, they're actually on a record run right now, the school. And yeah, it's, this, it's very similar to here. They're just, obviously there's more athletes there than there is there are here. Yes, athleticism. Yeah, that, that's the main difference. Other than that there's yeah that's the main difference for me was the athleticism and that's when i had to learn and adapt to be able to mm-hmm. be successful do you think your basketball iq was increasing college or you learned it more when you're over here um i think i probably had it when i was here and i probably showed it sh- shown it i was showing it and then was able to increase i i, I think i'd started here with my the fundamentals of as you get over here and i just went more so, and that's why my coaches love me because I, I, you know, I was I was always put in the, as the help defender. I was always in the right spot, did did all, all the right things, and I could shoot, which helps. <laughs> yeah, at, at your size as well. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, sorry, I don't mean. To yeah, no, 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 no. I keep saying back in that's why I, I, I say it all the back time. Back in the day, six eight wings that could shoot was sort of like a high commodity to to grab, yeah. spe- especially over here. How was that DP uh, season for Wildcats? It was good. Again, I, I loved I loved it because there was like a Rob Beveridge. He's a great coach. He was mm-hmm. amazing. I, I I can't put him enough. And then there was play, you know, Damian Martin, Kevin Lish, all those. But the only issue, not issue, problem with me was I spent four years in college having a single role of being a three point shooter. So like my coach would yell at me if I didn't shoot open shot, and basically if I took more than three dribbles, that was done. Like you know, like, unless it was a wide open layup. And then I come back here and. Bevo's offense is very free flowing and all that, and he goes, "Here, have a ball, go one on one against Damian Martin, Kevin Lish, Cameron Toby, Brad Robbins." I'm like, I haven't 
done it <laughs> done that for four years and, and now you want me to and so that was probably a little bit of a struggle for me to adjust back to doing being able to put, having the ball in my hands and so that was probably yeah, one thing I wish I probably did more of in college but I, again I played my role did it very successfully so when I came back I had to adapt to what I, what I had to do Do DPs get to travel with the team at all? Um, only if so I can't say back then because uh, <laughs> I don't know what it's like um, when I was there it was only if there was an injury um, so as if yeah, so we had that year. Brad Robbins and Cam Toby had a few injuries, and myself and Ben Person split it because you can only have a certain amount of people. Uh, you can, DP could only travel a certain amount of times before they had to come a full contract to play. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, blah, blah, blah. so yeah, so we had we, we split the opportunities in there. So I had, I think I travelled three times with the team, and he travelled three or four times as well. Is travelling like in NBL professional basketball pretty similar to what it was like travelling when you were with your college team? Because when you're in college, it's sort of like a professional. Yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, it was very similar. The only real difference was in college, you do a lot more team meals and stuff like that, whereas in NBA, it was more, here's your however many dollars you get for the, the what's, a, what's called per team. That's what's called, yeah. Yeah. Here's your however many dollars for the, the trip. Where, you know, we have breakfast in the hotel, but if you're going out, you can go out kind of stuff. That was the only real difference in the travel, I would say. And college, you, you're busting it because... Not that thing, and NBA obviously being in Perth, you've got to fly everywhere because we're yeah. so far away from everything. <laughs> <laughs> let's get let's get back to Coburn. You won your first championship in 2012, was, but unfortunately, you had a bit of an injury. I was 16, 16 I had the injury. Oh, 16 you had the injury. Yeah, 16, so yeah. 2012, you were, you were playing? Yeah, I played single. Yeah. Okay. How was it winning your first championship? Oh, it was. Yeah, I can't explain it. Uh, the not the club had had a 20 year 20 year drought. Um, like there's a photo up in the bar when my when the 20, 92, 92 grand final happened and there's a little blonde kid sitting on on a man's knee that's me sitting on my dad's knee <laughs> so I'm in the photo of the twenty of the ninety ninety two grand final yeah which is still up in the bar and then so be able to have that opportunity to win a club and be being a, I, I was starting so being a major part of it it was again I, I it was one of the best best days of my life. Basketball wise, I'll make sure I say yeah, that. Yeah, your kids are born, uh, mate. <laughs> yeah, basketball wise, it was the best, um, best, one of the best days of my life. And you know, then we even I pointed. I, it was not even planned. I pointed up into the stands. I said, "Dad, you're coming into the change rooms." And he came into the change room. We got him in, even though he wasn't meant to be back there. And I did the same. We did, we, we recreated the photo of me sitting on my dad's knee. Yeah. And, and so twenty years later, and, we, <laughs> and it was, you know, it's a pretty cool. Like, I think I hurt my dad's knee a little bit more <laughs> twenty years later, but it was pretty. It was cool. And then you won, or well, the team won another one in 2016. But this one, you had the injury. Yeah. What did you do to your arm? Um, so, technically, I caught, I tore the UCL in two places, which is the, the basically it's the part of the, the, the ligament that connects your bicep to your and your tricep. Like so, you can't. If, so I tore it in two places. The doctor had only ever seen it once anywhere else. Wow. And basically, I, I did it, and I felt it dislocate, and I felt it come back in, and then I went, I'm good. But I'm staring at my arm. My arm wouldn't move. There was no the connection to my elbow. It's my right arm, but my connection to my elbow wasn't there. So it didn't actually hurt that much. But I just I couldn't move physically move my arm. And you did it from basketball, I assume. Yeah. So I I went up for a pass. I got my legs taken out, and I landed on my straight on my arm. Yeah. On your dominant hand. Uh well, describe dominant. I, Are you ambidextrous, mate? It's my shooting arm, but I'm a left-handed person. So. Oh, you're one of those. Yeah, LeBron's but, like that. But I'm. <laughs> I'm a left-handed. I think I shoot right-handed because I watch my dad and people play basketball and I mimicked. Whereas yeah. I can shoot half-court shots left-handed. I can. I, I almost came back shooting, playing left-handed until because I only found out two weeks before the next season. I got cleared and then I went, oh, let's see if I can shoot. And I, I figured out my shot, even though I had to change my shot completely because my elbow. Yeah, so you had to redo your... Because my arm is, and you can see, that, that's how much shorter. Okay, it, well, one's it, significantly yeah, longer so than it's, the other. So it won't, yeah. So shoot, I had to change my shot. There's things I do now, like I like. Um, going for blocks and stuff, I'll go left-handed more than right-handed. So, it is my dom right. I am right-handed, but yeah. Did it take a lot of work to get your shot back? Um, it's thankfully a sh shooting is something that I can just innately do because I can do it with either hand. But yeah, it took to get consistency. So I, I could shoot, yes, but my consistency dropped off in that 2017 year. Mm -hmm. But it was yeah, it took a while. I had to change it from a more of a I, I'm, I'm more of a wrist flick shot now, and I don't yeah. have I don't have as much arc, which is something that makes yeah I had to adjust to. Okay, was it mentally tough not being able to play in that grand final? The grand final, not so much. I was fine with the grand final day. The one that hit me was when we beat Geraldton to get into the grand final. Mm -hmm. So it was at home. We won. 
were all in the change rooms. We sung the song and I, it just hit me that I wasn't going to be playing it. Yeah. And um, it just, I, I, again, I had to, I ran out the room and I had, to, I just had to go take time, time with myself for that moment. But the grand final day, no, I was completely like, let's go win this. Like, you know, like, why not? Like, it's I mean, like it's story. Like I was saying today to the guys, we had a little meeting for our team this year. Uh, about being ready and you know I was that year it was 48 minute games so I was playing like almost 40 minutes a game I think I averaged like 25 eight nine rebounds like four or five assists you really shouldn't be able to cover that yeah <laughs> like in in reality just the minutes and everything but you know we had some Rhett Della who just stepped up and just filled it and he ended up winning in grand final MVP so it's just the, it was like the story of winning with obviously losing myself, and my contribution to the, throughout the season is yeah, like yeah, I was more than proud of the team at that moment. 2012 versus 2016, 1-1 is your favourite championship. Well, it's easy, it's 12 because I played. <laughs> you played, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like, again, 12 first, I played. I obviously felt like I contributed to the game. I know I contributed to the season in 16. I was still part of it. I was sitting on the bench, still helping the guys. But yeah, no, 12 is definitely more to my heart because like yeah i played in the game <laughs> all right i'll give you a harder question then 2012 coburn cougars versus 2016 coburn cougars um am i playing in both <laughs> yeah okay all right um oh that's tough i'm almost inclined to say 12 because our import jeremiah wilson was just Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It would have been me trying to stop him from 26 and 2016 team, and he was he's a good player. Um, yeah, probably 2012. I would. Yeah, I'd say 2012. Who was the coach of 2012? Was Steve, it Charlie, Charlie Stephen Charlton? And then Matt Parsons was yeah. 2016. Yeah. yeah. Oh, were their coaching styles very different? Yeah, definitely very different. <laughs> um, Charlie, you know, he, he would know this. He's a screamer. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's a yeller, and that's just that's just Charlie. Like, it, yeah. It, some people did rub people the wrong way. Well, you know, people didn't enjoy it, but that was just Charlie the way it was. He was very drilled in point A to point B to point C to point D. Point a, whereas Parson was a bit more open, a bit more free throwing, a bit more. Charlie had his way. Parson was a bit more open to um, feedback and stuff. But they were both successful. They both won. Well, Charlie won two. Parson's won three. So they've both been successful. Yeah. So, do you, are you still very close with all your past coaches that you've had? Yeah, like again, uh, you know, I'm not calling them every week, but yeah, um, yeah no, I call, I, I'll CJ. Again, I had uh, CJ with my rookie year, so CJ Jackson, that is. Yeah, every time I see him, I have a chat with him. Parsons, Charlie, Nina, they're all the same. Obviously, Coop's now. When I when I see him next time, I'll have another chat. We'll talk about F1 because that's what we talk about a lot. Oh, who's your, who's your what's your team for F1? Oh, um, well, I, I have. Well, what are they called now? Alpha, what are they called? Alpha, Alpha. What, Alpha Tower, wherever, whatever, whatever oh, they're called, whatever really? they're called now. That you know, Daniel Ricardo. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, wh whatever they've just changed their name to something like F One Visa, something. I don't know. Whatever. I don't follow F One, but I follow Drive to Survive. Yeah. The Netflix documentary. Yeah. I feel like that's what majority of the people. Yeah, oh, I, that's how I fully got into it. But my best mate was is mad F One motocross, blah blah blah. So yeah. he he got me into it too. Fair enough. Let's uh, we'll go back to basketball. <laughs> You have won seven MVPs for Coburn Cougars. Yep. That's a lot of MVPs. Do you have a trophy room for your trophies? Like it's the, they're just on the study on the desk in the study. And my wife's like, what are we going to do with all this? <laughs> like there's there's a lot. Um, you know, anytime your kids misbehave, you can just be like, you need to listen to me. Look, I was a seven-time MVP. <laughs> I don't care about that. <laughs> they're children. Um, no, there's there's a lot. The, the 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 one there's a perpetual trophy that you get every that the MVP gets every year, and it's just silly. Like some, sometimes I give it to them like two weeks, and then two weeks later they give it back to me. I'm like <laughs> I don't want this in my house anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and all that stuff, but it's yeah, no, it's cool to yeah, it's cool. There's the um, we have we have another award. I don't get. I don't know what other clubs do. We have one called the Players Player. Yeah. Where the players vote three, two, one on whatever their own definition of the player player. And I, I won that three or four times. And that's probably the one that I hold closer because it's voted by my team mm -hmm. rather than as, you know, the, whatever the MVP voting or something like that to be able to, to be voted as your team as the players play is, is a cool, it's a cool award. Yeah. Do you have high hopes for the future of Coburn? I mean, last year wasn't the best of years, unfortunately. No. And you're going to be leaving like, any youngsters coming up that you're really looking forward to? Or? Yeah, there's again, there's a f there's a few. I, I don't, I wouldn't say there's probably one standout, 
you know, there's a few guys that work, you know, that again, there's you know, Charlie Dimmick and um, Aussie, or whatever his last name, St. Jack, whatever, yeah, whatever, um, who just went to the 20s, you know, they're, they're coming along pretty good. Alex McKinley, he's a point guy that's working his butt off this preseason, he's trying to, you know, putting his best foot forward. Um, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch. Jack Pitt, who I know just made the 18 state team, he's a, he looks like he's a good one coming up, but um, I think our the club's processes and the way the team is looking in the, in, in, into the future is a good way of, we brought in people like Hunter Clark, who's, again, he seems like an old guy, but he's young. Mm. You know, Saver's still around, Hayden Bell. There's still plenty of experience there. Nathan Pond, uh, Noah Stewart, who hasn't played because of three injuries. So there's still plenty of talent where Matt Cliff has just come back. I'm just trying to, I don't, I don't they all wanted shout out. So I just yeah. got to remember all, all that. Um, I think this year we're, again, we're, we're, our depth is a lot. We've got 14, 15 guys fighting for the 12 spots right now, I would say. Mm-hmm. And so that's a good thing to have, whereas last year, obviously a lot of it was injuries. We were trying or barely fielding a team some games with people that had actually played NBA 1. So, Are you going to stay around the club when you're done? Yeah, I'll, I'll always be around the club. It's I'll probably, I've said to guys, I'll probably have a year off completely mm-hmm. um, because, you know, it's, got a, you know, it's been 17 so, years. It's, it's not so much, uh, again, if I... Um, yeah, 17 years of this, I, I'll go to like, you know, if someone has a milestone game, I'll go to the game and stuff like that, but I'll stay away unless, like, my daughter did start mini, uh, like Cougar Cubs mini ball uh, last year, she's just having a bit, she just started kindy, so we're having a bit of time off, but if we, she wants to do that again, I'll be there, but I'll always be, again, we've been, I've been part of the club literally my whole life, I can't, yeah. I can't get escape it. Were there any other offers from any other clubs ever? Yeah, I've had people, I've had many people, um, and again, a few. I remember Nixie when he was at Perry Lakes just called me up and he goes, "Any chance?" I'm like, "Nope." He goes, "Cool, all right, no problem. I'll see you later." <laughs> Parsons called me every every year or sent me a message, "Can we talk?" And I'm like, "I didn't, yeah, you know, whatever." And I'll be like, "No, we're not all that." So there's been there's been and all, a lot of my old coaches have con- called me back and all that stuff. But no, there's been up at no. I was it's my club. It's what I've been growing up for, growing up with. It's yeah, it'd be interesting if I wore a different color. Yeah. What is it about Coburn that's kept you so loyal to them? Uh, probably my family's roots in yeah. it. Um, that's, prob- that's probably what I would have to go with. It's And the people. Like um, I've had long careers with people like Saver Chan, uh, Stephen Van Litt, who was where we were groomsmen at each other's weddings. We played, you know, he's a couple of years younger than me, but we played from, I, think, I don't know how many years we played together. Um, you know, Jared Holmes, there's just so many guys that we've gone to people's weddings and now babies and stuff like that, that that was another reason to stay. Why would I want to leave my mates and go yeah. to an unknown situation? What is it about Coburn that you think has that organisation ran so well? Because, I mean, they won in 92, they won in 2012, 2016. They're hard things to do to win multiple championships. Um, I don't know, because they're very, like, even the 12 to 16 was very different. Um I think it's just the people in the background. A lot of people in the background that you, that you wouldn't even have a clue. Like I said, I mentioned Rod Baker before. I don't think half people, not even half people listening, would know who Rod Baker is. But he was a guy that was so intimate, um, influential to the juniors when I was back then. I could list off names like Gary McKay, Dave Nugent, my dad, Gary Evans. There's just so many names that I could list off. And that was going back to when I was 16, 17, 18, let alone all the people that do it now. Um, I think it's just... The people and people are drawn to a club and also one thing that also helps we have our own stadium that always helps having, yeah. having your own stadium being able to use it as your own and not have to share it with some like a rec center or something like that. that's always a big plus yeah. i'll uh, i'll bring you back to some a sad time <laughs> we'll talk about last game of the season <laughs> against eastern suns joker green scores 54 points against you guys what was it like in the locker room after <laughs> after he just set the scoring record uh, I'm, I, again, I'm a bit a thing to that. He, he may have done it for NBL one, but I did get sixty and forty minute game too. <laughs> so and, and in regulation, um, but no, he was he was he was amazing. Like he was a um, basically in the locker room, it was just putting a lot on Taj um, Benning because he was the one guarding him all the game and just saying like, dude, he's got you know he's got 40, 45 on you and eight on everyone else and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. Um, but we won the game. Um, yeah, no, it, it was. Yeah, again, when again, I've done it, he's done it. When when people people are playing like that, you just got to try and make it tough for him. And he's a hell of a player, so you can't really do so much. So, what's it like scoring sixty? That's an insane number. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I did it. Um, how old were you when you did it? It was twenty eighteen. So, okay. uh, yeah, 
Um, I don't know. I just caught, I had first, I had forty four in the first half. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just I, I I don't know. Like it's like I said, I wasn't doing anything special. I was hitting threes and getting one dribble layout. I I don't know. It's just you get in the zone. You just do it. Um, I remember I come off in the second quarter. I needed a break, and I'm going. And I said, I think it was Jake Knight. I was sitting next to, him and I'm like, I'm going pretty well. I think I have like you know, I might have 20 here. And he goes, Gab, you have 40 right now. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Again, I just. I was just in it. Yeah, you just in it. You just go to a zone, and I'm sure. Like, I saw Joe Cook Green was exactly the same. You yep. get in a zone. You don't realize what you're doing. You just playing basketball, and you just again things are falling into place. I think the all time record is 82. Something like that, yeah. I know, I know the Coburn record's 63, and I was... Oh, you I, got I actually, it. Technically, I, some, they gave two of my points to someone else. Oh. So I technically had 62, but I don't know, but um, but I still, yeah, so... Do you reckon you could get 64 this season? <laughs> no. <laughs> I need, if I do it this season, it would have to be off, what's that? It'd have to be off 23s or something. If you did still. it this season, would you still go on another? Like, you score over 60 points in your last season. I know you want to finish on a high note when your body still allows you to, but... <laughs> You score sixty four. You gotta keep going. No, everyone. Everyone keeps saying like, we, yeah, we have a meeting today, and everyone's like, yep. When Gav finishes in three years, when Gav finishes in three years, <laughs> yeah. like, no, I'm like, I, I'm happy with my decision to be done, no matter what happens. Um, it's just, yeah, like I said, I, my my decision is is for the family. I'll tell you a story about Joel Wagner. He yep. retired, came back, retired, came back, said it was the last season, came back, until eventually he was done. Were you the same? No, I've always there was. The only real time I was possibly retiring was this off season. Okay. Uh, there was, again, like you, you mentioned, last year was hard. Last year was a tough year, and it was lots of lots of things with um, obviously Coops' wife passing, and then lots of injuries. It was just a just. I've never been part of a team that has been so injury ravaged. Um, it was just tough. Like we had sometimes in training we had eight guys training. So it's an NBL one team having eight guys training. It's just really tough. So there were parts of me like, do I want to do this again? Like, am I, mm-hmm. you know, with, again, family and all that. But that was really the only time that I ever thought about properly retiring. I made a comment one year when I, we lost to Amanda in a final. I was like, well, I've got to play again next year. Like, yeah. And people are like, oh, were you thinking about retiring? I'm like, no, no, no. I was just mm-hmm. saying, like, I've got, like, we played so bad. Like, we should have won that game Yeah, kind of thing. What Are you a sport teacher or are you just, like, a normal primary? Normal, normal, normal teacher, classroom okay. teacher. Do, I was just going to say, do any of the kids that you have be like, dunk, dunk, dunk? Oh, all the time, yeah. All yeah. Like, again, the, there's, there's a few that know, like, the older ones know that I play basketball, and I, I used to when I was year five, six. I actually got the kids tickets to the games and stuff oh. like that, and I still have kids from that year group, those year groups that come and watch the games, and they ask their parents, and it's got my details, and they like send me some fixtures. Yeah. So yeah, like, but no, in the playground, yeah, I, sometimes I play one on twenty. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we almost had you this time. I'm like, you know that I'm scoring four points, <laughs> letting you score two, scoring another yeah. two. Like, I'm letting, I'm keeping it close for you. You know those uh, teacher versus student games? Have you had any of those? No, we haven't. It's, it, it, well, it's teacher, me, yeah. versus students. <laughs> when I'm, when I'm, it, it's, it, duty's boring, so something, if I get to play, sometimes yeah, yeah. Kid, I get to play basketball, that's good. How many year six kids would it take to stop you? Oh, I once had, what was it? I think it was one on 27. <laughs> I think it was. It was. It was something like that. And then I accidentally changed direction, and one of the girls tripped over and hurt oh. herself. So the game was kind of off at that point. Damn. One between that would have been a funny picture if someone got a six eight guy with twenty seven year sixes around. Yeah, just dribble around them. Just <laughs> end up just shooting from half court just for fun. Yeah, that would, that would have been funny to see. Did you have to go back to uni here to become a teacher? Yeah, yeah. I, I came back, uh, was doing some work, and decided and went. No, I, I've always thought about doing teaching. It was just yeah. a matter of. Then spoke to my wife. I was like, I kind of want to do this. It was a, it's only, it was a grad dip, uh, grad dip, so it was only a year, yeah. year. But because you, you don't, you learn so much more on the job than you do at uni. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I did one more year and then I'm a teacher. So. You're already teaching. Are you going to get into coaching at all? Maybe I'll probably coach juniors. I don't know. Um, again, the amount of stuff that our coaches have to do for NBL one. They, I think they do more than we do as <laughs> players. We just rock up and play. Yeah, I got to keep you know do all the other stuff for our bodies, but. Uh, most likely more juniors, um, especially when my kids come up through the ranks and stuff like that, in, if they want to play. Like my daughter's played a bit. She's gone off it. My son's going to be massive, so there's a good chance he'll play. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm i open, but, I'll, again, I'll just see what happens with that. How do you – season predictions for Coburn this year, how do you see the season going? I, I'm – Optimistic again. You don't really know until you see all the rest of the teams because again, there's so many teams still haven't announced their imports or. Like, Have you like, guys announced yours yet? Yeah, um, we announced them last week. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, 
guy that can jump out of the gym, which is nice to have a roller <laughs> that we can throw the ball up to. How big is he? Uh, I think it was like six, seven, six, seven. So wow. we're not, not totally got me. We got, we got him. We got Reese Vay coming back. Uh, coming back. To yeah, Coburn. that's a crazy signing. So well, he's a Coburn junior. So it's yeah. not like he's you know that's really that crazy. He's coming back because he wanted to come back into the Perth. So we got Reese Vay. Um, again, we just picked Kyle Armour just came in, which is great. He's again a guy I played against for my whole life, and we played a few off season leagues together and have him and his leadership and his. Well, the fact that he doesn't shut up the whole session is, <laughs> is you know, he, it's building He does that talk, team. eh? He loves to talk. Um, yeah, our, like I said, our depth is amazing. So, like, I won't, like someone like me, I won't have to play 35 minutes a game. I can play 27, 28 minutes a game and go all out for those 28, 28 minutes. And, you know, I think that's going to help us. Obviously, with most teams and in, in this league, size is an issue because there's not that many no big bigs, kids. Yeah. And that's just, that's just the state of... Sorry. Australia. Uh, uh, WA Australian basketball. So we'll see how that, you know, what happens with that. But um, again, so far, preseason, everyone's working hard. Where everyone's, you know, we're buying into what Clado's putting in. And we'll, again, we'll see what happens going forward. You already had 10 meetings and stuff. Have you already set a goal as a team? Like, is finals the goal or is a grand final the goal? Like, uh, we haven't spoken about like that. Our one right now, we just had. Um, uh, Harry Taylor, the old extra long player, he come in and did some leadership stuff with us and some culture building stuff with us. And the ba- basic for me, the main thing that came out of it was focusing on the processes. Like if you do all the processes right, whatever they whatever they are for your team, you'll hopefully lead to. Oh, you know, if you're doing it right, you'll lead it to wins. And so we haven't set goals, but obviously the first initial goal is make finals. As soon as you make finals, then after that would be make, get the double chance that we have. But we haven't. I think until you. Like I always say to people, until you see the other teams, you can't comment because yeah. you can be all optimistic about your team. Even but. when imports are announced, you never know how they're going to play yeah. in this sort of league. Unless, well. unless they've been here before, but yeah, so there's new, you know, our Demetrius Morant, which is our import, he looks great, but you know, you never know. We've had imports that look great and been average, and we've had imports. Import East Perth got sent home midway yeah. through the year. We've had imports that look average and be great. Yeah. So you, you just never, unfortunately, you just never know what you're going to pick up. It's a bit easier now with the technology and stuff like that, mm. but you, know, you just never know. Have you set yourself a goal for the season? <sighs> My goal is easy. My goal is enjoy it. Yeah, um, just enjoy it. Enjoy it. 64 points. <laughs> <laughs> um, enjoy it. You know, be, have a successful year, help the club improve. Again, um, that's, again, I've done everything I need to do. There's in the league, like I don't, I don't have to say, oh, I want to make this all-star team or whatever. I've done... There's only two things I haven't done is MVP and finals MVP. And if I win finals MVP, well, I've won another championship. So, yeah. like, I, it doesn't bother me what I, what my goals are. My goals are to help the team as best as I can. Speaking of All-Star, you played in some SPL All-Star games, yeah? Yeah, I played in... Heaps. <laughs> I played in five or six, yeah. Do you think they should bring that back? Um, yeah, because I wouldn't be playing in it. <laughs> um, no, it, it's just because they... um. Yeah, I, I, they were good, they were enjoyable, but obviously it's another another day, another long week. It was always on the long weekend, the Sunday of the long weekend. You lost, lost that long weekend again. Um, I remember one game I had a double header going, and then I had that game. Oh wow! And it was just like it was hard. Um, but no, I, I, again, great concept. It's always good to get along around the best players in the league. And yeah, so that's about. a really good way to grow the game. Yeah, I, well. I think that's good. Yeah, but yeah, I just where to fit it in, how to fit it in, that's just the issue. And, and that's what, with all these look like, you know, state of origin and AFL, like everyone's like, oh, we should bring it back, but where, how, when, yeah. why, all that kind of stuff. Let's get into some trash talk, okay? You get to hit a dagger three on someone this season. Who are you hitting it on? Uh, um, I have to go either probably Damien Scott, just because we've, <laughs> we've known each other forever and he always talks trash and, and, you know, says he can guard me. And, or Luke Phillips. Yeah, he left us, and we've all, and we and we've had. He's at Hawks now. He's at Hawks, yeah. And we've we've had lots of battles over the last what one and a half seasons. In you're training. very similar build, used to. Very, we we got similar. Yeah, he, yeah, he's very very similar to the way we, we we play. Very similar. Luke Phillips, you hear that, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Three. Should, all right, now you get to ankle break someone. <laughs> my my thing with this is I just don't want to break my own ankles. <laughs> if anyone's watched the way I play, that's not my thing. And again, um, oh, see, I would say someone like Saver, like. Yeah, he gets me in training, so why can't I get him as well? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I don't, I don't know. That one, that one's tough because that's just not what I do. Yeah, not your game. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so we'll go to the last question yeah. before we sign off here. Some advice for some upcoming players through the junior ranks. So you have like three pieces of advice. Oh. All right, you put me on the spot. Yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> um, I think 
one thing is find what you do well and do it. Mm-hmm. Um, again, if you look at my game, my game's built on being able to shoot a three-pointer. Everything else builds from that. And if you can find what you do and get that strength really high and then you can build things after that, I think too many kids these days just try and go straight to doing everything. Like, you know, if you're not a shooter, go on the post, whatever it is. Do something, that you do whatever you do well. Um, and then it's just, I'll just last two areas. I would say the two of – I give these kids the same advice to my kids in my classes – um, in life, no matter what it is, do two things. Work hard, because if you're going to work hard, you're going to be able to succeed in most things, and have respect. Mm-hmm. Whatever the respect is, respect, again, if you're talking about basketball, respect your coaches, respect your teammates, respect yourself, give yourself the best opportunity. Referees. Respect referees, yes. <laughs> respect the support staff. Again, if you do that, those things, you know, whatever that respect is, however you show it, that will help you in good, in good steam going, say going, going forward over your life in yeah. basketball and out of basketball. Especially in the basketball world, though, because it's so small. Everyone knows everyone. Yeah. yeah. If you look again, if you look at, again, if I say about respect, ref, referee, and you say referees, when I, and referees have said this to me, when I kind of go off about a call or go off, they know it means something because mm-hmm. I've given them respect. Like, you know, if, if I'm arguing a call, I normally go up and chat to them, but if I go off, they're like, oh, okay, maybe there's something going on yeah, here more. Yeah, because you're not a Brian Hobbs just yeah. complaining about everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so again, if you show, again, respect, again, respect hard working, and then know your, what you're good at and build on that. Oh, some good advice. Well, thanks for coming on the show today, mate. It's been great chatting with you. Thank you for watching. Thank you again to our sponsor, ID Athletic. Make sure you guys follow, like, subscribe, do what you need to do, and that's it. Ciao.